200 years ago, there were less than one billion people living on Earth. For thousands of years, the population grew only slowly, but in recent centuries, it has jumped dramatically. Between 1900 and the year 2000, the increase in world population was three times greater than during the entire previous history of humanity. An increase from 1.5 to 6.1 billion in just 100 years. Today, the current world population is over 8 billion. That's the total number of human beings presently living on planet Earth. The gender ratio, that's the ratio of males to females, is about one to one. So there's roughly an equal number of men and women in the world. Now, what does this mean? Well, amongst other things, it means that mathematically at least, there should be someone special for each of us. We all need that someone special in our lives. Close personal relationships keep us happy and healthy. We are wired for personal connections. We're designed to love and be loved. But it also means that half the world's population, over three and a half billion people, are sometimes confused and sometimes frustrated. There's something men the world over tend to consider extremely complex and almost impossible to understand. And that's the inner workings of women. Men are often left to wonder about women and how frustratingly appropriate that word wonder is. Wonder describes a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable or unfamiliar. And to many men, that's exactly what the woman in their life is. Beautiful, remarkable and unfamiliar. No wonder men wonder about the wonderful woman in their lives. Most men have burned up lots of energy trying to figure out what a woman wants, what makes her tick, what's on her mind, how to make her happy. Well, there's good news. Success is simpler than people think. After years of research, Shanti Feltham shows that women actually can be understood. She's identified several key findings about women that explain many of the mysteries and enable a man to love his partner the way he wants to and be her hero. So stay with us because today, Shanti Feltan shares her helpful discoveries and guides us on a journey into the fascinating inner workings of women. This information could improve your relationships and change your life forever. There's one thing that we all want, all eight billion of us on this planet. We all want to be happy. Happiness is what we want. Being happy is behind virtually every one of our goals, objectives, missions and wishes. What happens when you look at the happiest people and scientifically analyze what they have in common? Well, researchers did just that. And there was a clear answer to what differentiated these happy people from everyone else. And it wasn't money, intelligence, age, gender or race. It was strong social relationships. That's what happy people have in common, strong personal relationships. It's true today, 300 years ago, 3,000 years ago. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Happiness is and always has been about our relationships with other people. We are social beings. In fact, we're the most social creatures on earth. We live in societies, not alone. Close relationships and social connections keep us happy and healthy. Basically, we humans are wired for personal connections. 
relationships. And the closest and most important of these relationships is our relationship with our partner, our spouse. We are designed to love and be loved. The importance of our personal relationships cannot be overestimated. We need to invest in them and do all we can to improve and strengthen them. It'll bring you happiness. And so our special guest today is going to share ways to do just that. Shanti Feldhahn will reveal eye-opening truths and simple acts that will radically improve the most important relationship in your life. Shanti is a popular speaker and best-selling author. One of her books has sold over two million copies. With a postgraduate degree from Harvard University, Shanti has worked on Wall Street and Capitol Hill. Now, she applies her analytical skills to researching marriage and relationships. And she's here today to share the results of her research with us. Shanti, welcome. It's a privilege to have you on our program today. Your books for women only and for men only have together sold nearly 2 million copies in 24 languages. Many men believe that understanding women is, is impossible. <laughs> now, you say it isn't actually true and that belief itself is a bit damaging. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So one of the things is we started, started the study, this big study on uh, women and how women think is we realized men tend to think, you know what, there's this part of my wife that I'm never going to understand. You know, women are just impossible to understand. And what we have found that that le leads to is, first of all, it turns out that's an inaccurate idea. Jeff had it too. And, you know, suddenly we see all the statistics. He was like, oh my gosh, you, you really can systematize women. <laughs> like, you really can understand women. Um, but the damaging piece of that is if you think that's not true, it makes it easy to give up on understanding too quickly. Because if you're confused by your wife and you kind of look, you're like, why did that make her so mad? And you can't immediately figure it out. You're predisposed to go, it's just that, you know, it, women are mysterious. I'm never going to completely understand her. On to the next, you know, <laughs> sort of you walk away whistling. And there may be something really crucial that if you understood it and you realize, no, 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 women can be systematized. Let me look closer and go, oh, maybe it's this. I didn't realize this before, but maybe it's this. And you go, okay, I now have a new piece of knowledge. Was this correct? Yes, this is correct. The next time you see that confusing behavior, you're more likely to go, okay, I could figure it out last time. I can figure it out this time. You look closer, you figure it out. And if you assume women are just mysterious, I'm never going to be able to completely understand, you're more likely to miss all of that and end up having a widening gap between you and your wife as things pile up that are really important to her, but you've sort of dismissed as, oh, it's just that mystery. So what are some of the findings you discovered in your research that men need to know? For example, if there was one most important thing a man needed to know about women, what would it be? <laughs> well, honestly, there is probably one most important. We found seven things that in this big study um, that are really crucial, but they tend to tie to one as a starting point. And that is men don't realize this, but women have this underground question in their hearts. And it starts, we don't know when it's, where it exactly starts in childhood, but it starts somewhere in childhood where a woman is basically asking herself, am I really lovable? Right. And in marriage, that doesn't go away. And men tend to think, okay, you know, we said our idea do's and she knows I love her and on to the next thing. Because you as a guy, you don't really question once you get married, does she love me? Like it just, doesn't kind of come up in your mind. There's no switch in a woman's brain that gets flipped to this, oh, now I feel permanently loved <laughs> position. And instead, that question in her heart, in marriage, it just morphs to not just, am I lovable, but does he really love me? Is he happy he married me? Would he choose me all over again? And she has that question subconsciously in her heart every single day. 
And so she's kind of looking for the answer, for signals about the answer to that question every single day. And so that is a huge thing for men to know, that they have an incredible opportunity to, to look for opportunities to say, I love you. I'm so glad I married you. You're mine. I would choose you all over again in little ways every day. And those little things can literally be you're walking across the parking lot and you take her hand. That says, I would choose you all over again. It doesn't have to be big things, but understanding that that self-doubt is there and answering it well every day, that right there will put your marriage on a great footing. Okay, so men hearing about this inner question, this inner insecurity of women, are going to want to figure out what to do to fix it. So what can a man do to address this? Now, you say there's something that can fix it and something that can prevent it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's really interesting. What we found is that that question never completely goes away. That, am I lovable? Does he really love me? Is he glad he married me? You know, those kinds of questions. But they're running under the surface. And when the first thing that a guy probably needs to know is what to do when it's been triggered. Because let's just say you're having a conflict, right? And there's emotions running high. And that's one of the things that triggers that underground question in it rises up and it's kind of roiling in her gut and it's this feeling like ah uh, are we okay you know that's and it's kind of a painful feeling guys don't realize that but it's a bit of a painful feeling and a lot of times men in that situation one of the things we found about men in the study of men is that they most need to get a little away they need to get a little space they need to get a little distance from it so they can think it through and respond well but when he's off getting his space her question is like, ah, uh, you know, and she's, she's really, truly, it's when you're at odds with your husband, a lot of women on the survey said, it's like nothing is right with the world until that is resolved. So for a man, one of the things we found statistically, I can't remember the exact number, but it was something like 95%. It was a very high number the, of the women said, if the man will just, before he goes and gets his space, if he'll just say something like this, it makes a lot of difference. Like, honey, look, I'm angry. I need some space, but I want you to know we're okay. I'll come back, you know, in a couple of hours, we'll talk about it, or I have to go to work, but we'll talk about it tonight or whatever it is so that she's been reassured and, and has the ability to sort of put that concern that, ah, are we okay, can put that concern to rest. You'll see her relax. It's huge for a woman. I know it sounds funny to a guy, but that's huge. Um, what can you do to prevent that ever being triggered to begin with? That's an even better thing. And it's really, truly sending her this signal that I would choose you all over again today. Oh, and again today, and again today. And literally, like the reaching across and taking your hand when you're walking across a parking lot, that says that. When you're sitting together at church or you're at, at, at dinner with friends and you put your arm around her, the women, I can't remember, it was something like 87%, like it was a really big percentage, said, it seems so simple, but those little physical gestures say something really profound. Um, even, you know, you're at, a, at work and you just think, I'll just text her saying, you know, oh, this has been such a hard day at work. I can't wait to see you tonight. I love you. See you later. Press send. It took you 10 seconds. But the women are like, I save that text message. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it just is these little things that reassure her every day. And she's so secure that you care about her that when you have that argument, that uh, are we okay thing doesn't even come up. So Shanti, let's go back to this fix it mentality. Please help men understand why they so often hear from their wife or girlfriend, I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to listen. And it's so funny. <laughs> the guys on the, in the survey of men, the men are like, what do you mean by this? Like, I usually hear this after I've been listening for 10 minutes, <laughs> right? And it's because for a guy, he's listening to something different than what the woman wants him to listen to. See, for, for you, because of the male brain wiring, different from the female brain wiring in this area, you've trained yourself your whole life that when someone comes to you with a lot of emotion about something, which is usually when you hear this, right? 
or you feel yourself getting emotional, you know that all that jangling emotion, it's going to get in the way of you kind of focusing in on the problem and thinking clearly. So you've trained yourself. I'm just going to filter out all that jangling, all those feelings so I can focus in on the problem and fix it. And what you don't realize as a guy is all these jangling feelings, that's what she most wants you to listen to. And so it makes so much difference if you, and I know this is going to sound so weird to a guy. When we were doing the research, Jeff is like, this feels really weird. <laughs> um, but if, if you will do one thing first, there's actually a step one and a step two here. And step two is when you get to put on your Mr. Fix-It hat. Step one is when you actually filter out the problem. I know that sounds weird. Like your wife comes to you and she's so upset because her boss, let's just say her boss embarrassed her in front of the group or whatever. And she's explaining this. It's your natural inclination to be like, okay, so here's what you need to do when you walk in tomorrow morning to get your credibility back, okay, what, or whatever it is. And you're going to hear, I, you're not listening to me, right? If you will ignore the boss embarrassing her for a minute, if you'll ignore the problem and how does she get her credibility back and instead pull out those feelings, focus on all the jangling emotions. I'm so sorry. Did, did you feel like anybody was kind of snickering at you, kind of laughing? You know, did you feel immediately like you'd lost your, tell me how you felt. Now you pull those feelings out. I know for you as a guy, a lot of guys are like alarmed by this idea of like, pull the feelings out more. That's like gasoline, you know, on a fire. And instead, it, what we found statistically with the women, it's not like gasoline on a fire. It's more like you're pulling poison out of a wound. That's the better analogy. And as you pull these feelings out of her, she'll, you'll see her start to relax because she's feeling heard. And once she's felt heard and she's gotten out how she's feeling about it, that's when you can move to step two, which is, do you want to talk about what you do when you walk in tomorrow morning? And then she'll be able to concentrate on that because for her, the most important problem is how she's feeling. She can probably figure out the solution on her own if she had to. She can't feel listened to on her own. Shanti, it's no surprise to men that women think differently. However, men are so confused sometimes about why women seem to get so caught up in a concern and not be able to let it go. Now, you give a great analogy to men about the difference in how women process emotions and what they as a man can do to help. Tell us more about that, please. Yeah, so every guy is leaning forward right now going, what is the, <laughs> what, how do I do this? So here's basically the difference in how men and women process thoughts and emotions. And it's actually related to the brain wiring. There has been a lot of study from sort of a neuroscience perspective that we now understand where this comes from. I'm simplifying this. But essentially, think of your brain as being almost like a computer desktop. And a man's brain is kind of like a computer desktop with one window open at a time. And he's got, you know, that one window, that one document, it's kind of one thought, one feeling, one function, one process happening at a time. And he works on it, he thinks it through. And once he's done, he clicks the X, it goes away, and he opens up the next window, the next thought, the next feeling, whatever it is, works on one thing at a time. It's literally the way the male brain is structured. And there's some ex exceptions to this, obviously, but that's the majority. A woman's computer <laughs> desktop is more like one that has 10 windows open all at once, 10 thoughts, 10 feelings, 10 worries, whatever it is. And she's processing them all at the same time. And she clicks the X to make it go away and it pops right back up. She clicks the X, pops right back up. She can't get rid of it. And that worry, whatever it is, is going to keep bugging her until she takes some action to resolve it. So let's use the example of the boss who embarrassed her at work, right? Or whatever happened. And she's like, it's just bugging her. And she brings it up a few times. Her husband, trying to be helpful, <laughs> is probably going to say, honey, you can't do anything about it tomorrow until tomorrow. So just don't think about it. Just don't let it bother you. And for a guy, that's very helpful advice. For a woman, she's like, I don't even know what that means. Because he's saying, click the X. 
but we can't do that. I think it's 87% of women say that I just can't do that. I have to deal with it in some way. I have to address it. It can be something like that. It can be something like, you know, the baby is sick and it would really make me feel better to just call the doctor, you know, and just make sure everything's okay. It, whatever that open window is, if a guy can stop himself from the natural tendency to say, honey, just don't worry about it, and said, go, this is my chance to earn some major points <laughs> and say, you know what? What would make you feel better right now? Would it help to do something? Like, and and she'll feel so loved because he's not poo-pooing it. He's instead saying, would it help you? You know, would you feel better if? What would make you feel better right now? That is huge. It's a little thing. But once he looks for it, he's going to see this everywhere. This is huge. Shanti, when it comes to physical intimacy in marriage, you say men and women have some big misunderstandings. What is it that men misunderstand about women? And what can the average husband do about it? Yeah, major misunderstandings here. So it it turns out that when a man isn't feeling enough of that sense that his wife desires him in marriage in that way, he really honestly puts it in the category of, I'm just not desirable. That's kind of the only answer in his mind. And so we actually, on the survey, we gave the women who said that they tended to want that intimate time less than their their husbands, because sometimes the couples are are reversed on this, but the majority of cases, um, we gave the women who said that that was the case for them a, a big laundry list and said, what are any or all of the reasons why? When that, you know, when that just is not as much of an interest to you, or if you have this gap, what are the reasons why? You know, the men think that I'm just not desirable is going to be the only reason. And it turns out that was 4% of women. 4%. 96% said something else. And the main something else, it turns out, is actually a physiological difference between men and women that most of us are completely unaware of. I had no idea until I started this research trying to figure out what was underneath this. It turns out there's two different types of desire. And there's something called assertive desire. And some and someone who has assertive desire has a desire to pursue physical intimacy and to be thinking about it all the time and ready at a moment's notice, right? Guess who tends to have assertive desire? It, it tends to be tied to testosterone. Um, but there's a completely different type of desire. It's called receptive desire. And someone with receptive desire is just as willing and just as interested but doesn't have the same desire to pursue it and isn't thinking about it all the time and isn't ready at a moment's notice. Guess who tends to have receptive side? It tends to be tied to estrogen and other typically female hormones. Now, sometimes, like I said, sometimes we're flipped on this, but in most cases, the person who has receptive desire tends to be the wife and she just needs to be approached differently. If you have receptive desire, you have to know what your husband has on his menu for the evening before you get to the bedroom, basically. And, um, and guys kind of, they hear that and they think, you mean I need to warn her? <laughs> like, that doesn't feel so good, right? And no, that's not it. What, the way we put it is she needs anticipation time. She really just needs to be thinking about it ahead of time because she is physiologically different. And if you'll flirt with her in the morning, if you'll make some cute little comment about what you'd like to see happen later tonight, whatever that is, it gets her, it's like, oh, it gets her thinking about it. Um, now, it doesn't solve every issue. It, one of the other things we found that is true is that most women kind of need to feel close outside the bedroom in order to want to be close inside the bedroom. But you can be incredibly close and you're still going to bump up against this physiological difference. This makes such a difference once men understand it's not about whether or not my wife desires me. It's really, truly, she's just different. Shanti, it's been a privilege to have you on our program today. Thank you so very much for this valuable information that you've shared. And I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all the best in the future in Thanks. all your endeavours. Thank you that. again. Thanks. 
Without a doubt, the desire for happiness is one of the most consistent longings of the human heart. And strong, fulfilling personal relationships is one of the keys to a happy, healthy life. The Bible has so many vital words of life, so many practical answers for building rich, abundant personal relationships, and in particular, happy, lifelong marriages. That is God's will for our lives. He wants us to experience happiness and to live life to the full. Notice what the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. If you'd like to strengthen your relationships, if you'd like to make a happy marriage even happier, if you'd like your relationships to span the years and survive all the ups and downs of everyday living, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the booklet called 14 Steps to a Happy Marriage. This booklet is our gift to you and is absolutely free. I guarantee there are no costs or obligations whatsoever. So please don't miss this wonderful opportunity to receive the free gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand. Or visit our website tij.tv or simply scan the QR code on your screen and we'll send you today's free offer totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia, or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you would like God to strengthen your everyday relationships and your marriage and bring you happiness and fulfilment, why not reach out and ask Him to do it right now as we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and goodness to us. Thank you for the promise to strengthen our relationships and our marriages. Lord, we want to experience happiness and live life to the full. Please bless us now as we reach out to you and please make our relationships and marriages as strong and happy as you planned them to be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 